Hey everyone, I'm sure you're all aware that every application that we use today has something called the front end, which is the user interface, and the back end, which is the software that accesses data for us. And finally, we have the database to store the data. Now, these three together form something called as the full stack. So, hi guys, welcome to this video on what is full stack by Simply Learn. But before we begin, if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to never miss an update. So here's what's in store for you. First, we'll have a look at what front-end development is. Then we'll see some of the front-end languages. Then we'll move on to some front-end libraries and frameworks. Then we'll see what back-end development is. Understand some of the popularly used back-end languages and frameworks. And finally, we'll have a look at the database. So now what exactly is front-end? Every time you open a website, it has several UI components. And once you click on a particular icon, say sign in in this case, you get navigated to the sign in or the login page, right? So what happens is that all of these items facilitate navigation and utility. These are collectively called as the front end. So the front end is the visible part of the website or the web application, which is responsible for user experience. The user directly interacts with the front end portion of the website or the web application. So now let's have a look at some of the front end languages. So I'm sure you've heard of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So these are collectively called the front end languages. When it comes to HTML, it defines the structure of websites and formats the web pages. It also defines text documentation. So let's look at a simple example. So here I've made use of the H1 tag, which is the heading tag in HTML, and I've displayed the message, hello, welcome. So correspondingly, my website displays the same message. So HTML is responsible or it defines what is being shown on the website. Next up is CSS. Now CSS is a style sheet that allows you to alter and style different web components, be it size, font, spacing, etc. It makes the content on the website look more decorative, correct? So now if you have a look at the code here, I've added some styling. I've changed the font style to italic. I've made the text bold and I've changed the color to red. And again, correspondingly, all the changes are seen on the website. Moving on, we have JavaScript. Now, JavaScript is a very powerful client-side scripting language and it is mainly used for enhancing the interaction of a user with the web page. So again, if you have a look at the code here, I've created a form wherein the user can enter their name. And I've also displayed the message, please enter your name. As a result, an input box is made available where the user can type in their name. Now, this is facilitated by JavaScript. So as I mentioned earlier, it is used to make web pages interactive and bring the web applications to life. So next, let's have a look at some front-end frameworks and libraries. Now, most of these are JavaScript frameworks and libraries. First, we have React, then there's Angular, there's Vue, there's jQuery, and then there's Bootstrap. Now, all of these help develop the front-end of the application. However, when it comes to React, Angular, and Vue, it's not necessary that you must know everything to create a website. One of them will be sufficient. However, the usage of React is on the rise and most of the developers prefer using React. jQuery and Bootstrap are also powerful frameworks that can be used to create interactive web pages. Now that you know what front-end development is, you must be wondering how the data is being fetched and how this data is being presented in front of you on your screen. Correct? Now, this is all facilitated by the backend of the application. So, let's understand what backend development is. Now, backend basically refers to the server side development of the application. It is responsible for managing all the database with the help of queries and APIs. So, every time the user makes a request, it queries the database and retrieves the data from the database and presents it to the user. And lastly, it ensures data consistency. So now let's have a look at some backend languages and frameworks. Firstly, we have Node. Node and Express.js are packages provided by JavaScript. 
Then there's Python, which is a very popularly used language. Python frameworks like Django and Flask are popularly used to create the backend of applications. Then there's Java. And Java provides Spring and Java server faces, which are also used for backend development. Then there's C Sharp, which provides frameworks like ASP.NET Core and ASP.NET MVC. And other popularly used backend languages are PHP, there's Perl, and Ruby. Database is the collection of interrelated data, which helps in efficient retrieval, insertion, and deletion of data from database and organizes the data in the form of tables, views, schemas, reports. Now, some of the commonly used database management systems are MySQL. There's PostgreSQL, there's Microsoft SQL Server, there's Oracle Database, and then there's MongoDB. But how can we at Simply Learn help you? If you wish to make a career as a full stack developer, then a certification will come in handy. For that, you could head to our official website and look for full stack development courses. Now, we offer the full stack Java developer master's program. We also provide the postgraduate program in full stack web development. And we also provide the full stack web developer mean stack masters program. You can go ahead and click on the program and have a look at the overview. If this suits your requirements, you can go ahead and purchase the course. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit Skill Up by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. Mobile and web applications are something that we practically can't live without. From ordering food, to booking flight tickets, to making important bank transactions, these apps have made our lives easier. To cope with the changing demands with respect to user experience and security, web development needs to take a robust and efficient approach. This video tells you what the future of web development will look like. So let's begin by understanding what web development is. A web development involves building and maintaining website and other web applications. A web developer is expected to convert a web design into a website. They're responsible for how a website or web application looks and functions from its user interface and page layout to backend systems for gathering data. So a lot goes into building a website. There are several tools, frameworks, and packages that help create web applications. HTML, CSS, JavaScript are the basic languages required to develop a website. JavaScript offers several frameworks and libraries like React, Angular, and Vue. JavaScript and its environment like Node.js and Express.js. Node is an open source cross platform runtime environment that allows developers to create server side tools and JavaScript applications. Knowledge of the basic command line like NPM, Node Package Manager, is essential. But I'm sure you're aware of all this. So, what's going to be new? Well, according to experts, there are four major future trends in web development. So, let's start and decode them one by one. First up is TypeScript. TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript and is an object-oriented programming language. In simple terms, it is just JavaScript with other impressive additional features. TypeScript supports all JavaScript libraries and frameworks. With an increase in code complexity, JavaScript had to fulfill the requirements of OOP. Hence, that lead to the introduction of TypeScript. TypeScript helps with quicker code development, thus improving performance. There are a few improvements with TypeScript that give it an upper hand over JavaScript. Only at the time of development does TypeScript bring out compilation issues. This reduces the chances of mistakes occurring at runtime. A property of TypeScript is that it is strongly typed or enables static typing. Static typing allows type correctness to be checked at compilation time. In JavaScript, this isn't possible. TypeScript is nothing but JavaScript and some additional features, i.e. ES6 features. Some of these features are interfaces, generics, namespaces, null checking, and access modifiers. TypeScript supports IntelliSense, which provides active hints as the code is added. 
So considering all these advantages, TypeScript is something that will be widely adopted by teams across the globe. Next up is WebAssembly. WebAssembly is a new way to run on the web. WebAssembly or WASM is the second universal programming language that all web browsers can understand and run. However, you're not going to be writing scripts in WebAssembly yourself. It's a low-level assembly language designed to be very close to compiled machine code and very close to native performance. What this means is practice is that JavaScript is no longer the only language you can run on the web. Web browsers can run any language now, if that language has a WebAssembly compiler. Even traditional desktop languages like C++ and Rust can be compiled down to WASM with relative ease. WASM currently runs in 94% of users' browsers with IE, UC Browser and Opera Mini support being the main things holding it back, as per usual. However, it's backed by developers from Mozilla, Microsoft, Google, and Apple, and support in modern browsers is fast moving. Next up, we have package managers. Packages, a package manager or package management system is a collection of software tools that automates the process of installing, upgrading, configuring, and removing software packages for a computer's operating system in a consistent manner. It typically maintains a database of software dependencies and version information to prevent software mismatches and missing prerequisites. NPM is the package manager for the Node JavaScript platform. It puts modules in place so that Node can find them and manages dependency conflicts intelligently. It is extremely configurable to support a wide variety of use cases. Yarn is another package manager that replaces the existing workflow for the NPM client or other package managers while remaining compatible with the NPM registry. It has the same feature set as exciting workflows while operating faster, more securely and more reliably. Lastly, we have JavaScript dialects. Compiler to JavaScript, there are many JavaScript dialects like CoffeeScript, Dart, Babel, TypeScript, and Svelte that offers better features than JavaScript and ultimately compile to JavaScript. It is likely that these languages will be the future. There are several other predictions like better appreciation for web standard, less client work, and more focus on personal projects and the need to know more languages. Regardless, the future of web development looks more promising than ever. If you wish to make a career as a web developer, start now. So where do you think the future of web development is headed? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for being here. Watch out for more videos from us. Until then, keep learning and stay tuned to Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.